is it being recorded yes okay great a warm welcome to uh, everyone who has joined us today uh, in this seminar eggs and their shelf life uh, from the farm to the plate so the main objective of this webinar is to understand uh, for the layer farmers, poultry farmers, how they can increase the shelf life of their eggs and optimize the shelf life of their eggs right through the supply chain from production, storage, transportation, uh, processing till it uh, reaches the end consumer. So uh, we have with us uh, our keynote speaker and a well-known face uh, from the industry named uh, Mr. Suresh Chituri the MD and Chairman uh, of uh, Srinivasa Farms. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Hello. Thank yes. So uh, Srinivasa Farms uh, has been uh, involved in activities like uh, chicken breeding, broiler in uh, integration, egg and uh, uh, chicken processing, feed manufacturing, soya and oil extraction and uh, processing. He is also the Chairman of the International Egg Commission uh, the only Asian to hold the position uh, in the history of the institution. So we once again welcome you, sir. He is uh, known uh, for his uh, helping nature towards the individual farmers, industry uh, professionals and the country. He is also uh, in, involved in sustainable and reliable uh, production activities and procurement activities in the poultry industry. We also have with us uh, Ms. Surbhi Rao, Director Narsipur Chemicals. Narsipur Chemicals is engaged in manufacturing and exporting of uh, biosecurity products for, for the poultry, dairy and aquaculture industries. Uh, she has been a major growth uh, inhibitor. She has been pushing the company for the past three, uh, four years and doubling uh, the revenue. She Her initiatives in the healthcare as well as the commercial cleaning uh, segment has uh, really uh, worked well. Narsipur is well known for uh, its innovative, well-researched and uh, quality products in the biosecurity space. So without much delay, I would like to hand over the conversation and discussion to Mr. Suresh and uh, Ms. Surbi. Uh, attendees can uh, put in their questions in the chat box so that uh, we can take it after the discussion. So, yeah, we can start. Ms. Urubi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Heman. Good day to you, Mr. Chituri. It's indeed a pleasure interacting with such an enigmatic key industry leader today. And I'm sure we have lots to take away from this discussion from you today. So, shooting away my first question without much uh, waste of time, uh, we would like to understand that throughout the 78 week life cycle of a bird in a layer industry, a farmer has to look into several aspects. What, according to you, are the top three elements, if neglected or ignored, result in heavy losses for a layer farmer? So, uh, thanks, Surabhi, for having me. And, uh, and, and uh, uh, so, really honored uh, that you have invited me for this. And like I, as, I, as I told you, I'm always available to talk about eggs anytime. Uh, and 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 I'm actually very excited to see uh, you know uh, uh, a, a, a girl uh, heading in our industry. So that's uh, something that uh, I hope to see a lot more of them, including my own daughter, in time. Uh, so so good good. Uh, so about the, the top three things, uh, Surabhi, I think uh, if you ask me more than anything. The magic bullet, a silver bullet, or magic is uh, is uh, biosecurity, biosecurity, biosecurity. That's it. I mean, if oh. you there's really no other magic bullet, and I I really find it uh, amazing and maybe appalling to about how complicated we make it. Uh, our business is actually very boring business in some sense. You know, it's uh, you know it's just biosecurity. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> it's about keeping things simple. It's not a complicated business, uh, you know, because everything else you have 
the knowledge available, right? You want to change your feed formulation. It's just a phone call away or something. Somebody will help you. You need some help. and But, but what nobody can help you with is how you maintain biosecurity. And, and what is biosecurity in the end, right? I mean, it is, it's again, it's very, very simple things that need to be done properly, right? Now, like if you, if you see COVID, it has taught us what is, you know, again, what is simple things to manage yourself properly, right? Wash your hands for 20 seconds. Funnily, I never realized what 20 seconds meant till my watch now tells me every time, am I watching, washing 20 seconds or not, right? I mean, yes. I never realized I never used to wash 20 seconds, you know, that and today. So till it tells me I can stop, I keep washing, right? And that's that's as simple as that. Wearing a mask, I'm maintaining certain distance. Now, none of them is very complicated itself, right? It's boring. Again, same thing. And, and our biosecurity is like that too. And, uh, and, and I think... Uh, uh, Surabhi, there are farms now in, in uh, where there's been heavy effects of you know bird flu, whatever it is, but the farm has survived with no problem mm. because there's been proper biosecurity. And for That's some really reason, yeah. and and like like if you see Highline uh, in a few years back, I think 2015, Iowa got hit uh, with very bad uh, avian influenza. I think they lost close close to five crore birds. Uh, and and Highlands operations are in the middle of that. They didn't lose a single bird. Mm. Only mm. because of mm. the entire nice. world. The end. Go ahead. But how expensive is this biosecurity? You know, do uh, how will it affect the profits and the productivity? I mean, like productivity, yes, but profits? Does it hit the bottom line? Why? It, why it does biosecurity? Because, uh, because people don't calculate the losses that they get because they didn't have proper biosecurity, right? I know an uncle of mine, you know, he, uh, within, I think, 48 hours, he had a six lakh bird farm or something, he lost five lakh birds, uh, okay. you know, within 48 hours. And, 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 and what was the issue? One of the worker working in the farm, you know, she had some chickens which were infected. Now, what is the cost that he had to incur to, you know, all if he had given her a uniform, made sure she took bath, in, you know, set up a small toilet, how much would it have cost him, you know, overall, if you see? I don't think in the 20 years of operation, I don't think you would have, you know, you would have spent as much as one lakh bird. So the cost actually is nothing. People don't realize, uh, you know, like we are one of, one of our breeder farms now. We really clamp down on biosecurity there. We're doing phenomenal performances uh, surabhi my father now sometimes when we talk about that unit he starts getting emotional and starts literally crying he says 55 years i've never seen performances like this 55 and he's the man who built this industry right and he's now we we are consistently getting uh you know it's about 65th week i think except for 10 days in between every week we are getting four percent above standards the only yes, secret is biosecurity. <laughs> and if you see, my farm manager won't let me go in. He doesn't allow a director into the farm because he didn't take some precautions. That's it. He doesn't allow the director. I saw with when I was going, he said, sir, you can't go in. He told the director. And he's, <laughs> the, director. He, he's the guy he reports to every day. He says, you can't go into the farm. Okay. That's it. Okay. But does biosecurity help uh, coming back to a topic of the day in uh, preserving the shelf life or even extending the shelf life to a certain extent of the produce. Absolutely. In this case, particularly. See, what, what are the issues that impact shelf life, right? Uh, the thing that impacts the shelf life, one is most importantly, is the internal quality of the egg. Right. If if you had say diseases in your farm and like like something like mycoplasma, right? It it starts affecting your internal quality of your egg, and then mm -hmm. uh, I think some of the IBH or some of those diseases, you know, they they start reducing mm -hmm. the shelf quality, mm -hmm. uh, uh, internal quality, and then that eggs, you know, it reduces it this thing. So if you have your farm is maintained right, you're getting great productions, you're getting the best quality eggs. Uh, you know, 
you know eggs now go from uh, vijayawada to tinsukia which is a two week uh, it takes almost two weeks mm -hmm. there's absolutely no problem no no cold storage nothing is uh, it okay okay nothing so you know and once they go there they get sold off in a day or two kaam khatam but if you if uh, uh, if you are if you are not maintaining properly you know some of these diseases start affecting the shell quality uh, egg is a beautiful fantastically designed most perfect design you know i mean it's like you know as long as the egg doesn't crack you know the egg itself it has got the protection for 2 to 3 weeks it can protect itself it doesn't need cold storage nothing so for our country i wouldn't even recommend we going for cold storage because you don't need it of course again you know you have diseases uh, or something then then your egg start getting dirty that's all symbol of you know signs that you have something is not right in your farm uh, you know but as i said if you maintain by security uh then you prevent these diseases from coming into your farm uh i i would i would safely say 95% of the issues can be resolved only through biosecurity you don't have biosecurity you can't you never can feed that so my measure always with my own farm or everywhere i'm talking about is is how little medicines are you using a farm that uses uh, I, i mean medicines in the sense yeah. the right things right i mean are you mm -hmm. using cleania farm maintaining hygiene and all that that's a different story but you don't have to use too much if you have your, the right biosecurity your medical cost will be the lowest and your productivity will be the highest mm -hmm. so so for our viewers in short biosecurity is uh, everything that includes cleaning hygiene sanitation disinfection fumigation treating your water treating your environment Uh, so that's that's a beautiful point. I mean, like a lot of things can be solved just by biosecurity. Uh, of course, uh, I do believe listening to you, our viewers might have a lot of questions. But a question uh, from my end uh, is: Does the present Indian scenario help the concerned pro professionals in the industry at present achieve their goal with respect to biosecurity and ensuring good quality of eggs? are there plenty of product options process options awareness programs support groups and if yes where do they where do they go and connect so i think see uh, uh surubhi i mean uh, every day i probably get 10 or 15 emails from different different companies uh, having webinars so i think it's never been as good as right now now the point yeah. is you have to participate right uh, yeah. and you have to participate you have to be open to learning and 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 if farmers want and i'm sure uh, you know i i can support in organizing more webinars or whatever it is i think because people like you i'm sure will be very interested in uh, and you know everybody is very interested in that so i think mm -hmm. that that we've always been doing but i think covid has taught us you know platforms like this right zoom mm -hmm. calls online webinars and we can do it in any language uh, you know it's become and, easier yes for people yeah. from different parts of the country to connect yeah it's easier right i mean uh, imagine that one time we have to go there we have to take a venue you know we have to spend a lot of money whereas this is almost nothing so nothing. i think that's there so the knowledge is available uh, sometimes you know i said you are in, in you are in business right uh, mm -hmm. and as businessman as an entrepreneur you have to understand nobody will come and help you you have to seek out there's more than enough people to help you uh, i think uh, and so i think but the the opportunities are tremendous there's no doubt about it uh, because you ask me uh, india is i mean like last two years we added six eggs per capita you know that's that's almost a germany that is a germany we added in a, in two years and uh, and i think uh, my my thing is if we get our act right we can double in the next 5 years i think we will Wonderful. double we will add a united states every 5 years from now on one for at least uh, 20 more years and 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 uh, so now globally uh, from iec perspective we have taken on a game of vision 365 that is the world average goes to one egg a day which is about mm -hmm. it today 165 eggs 
uh, per capita, the world average. Uh, but you know, we are saying because if you want perfect health, frankly, you ask me. You have to eat two eggs uh, a day. Uh, mm. My son eats 20 eggs uh, a day, uh, and and he really has. I mean, if you see, is he into bodybuilding or something like that? Yes, that's why yes, yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah absolutely and uh, so I, I eat at least four eggs a day uh, and and you know in the last two years Surabhi, i lost about 33 kilos uh, mm -hmm. been able to do stuff which i was never thought possible like I, I cycle now 100 kilometers a day uh, and you know uh, so which was not possible for me before and you know but but that's what eggs are it took me time to realize that we have the most perfect magic product and I think the world is recognizing that COVID has been the best advertisement for eating eggs. Mm -hmm. uh, people who want great health, as I said, so if you go two eggs per capita, so that's seven and seven twenty eggs, so that is ten times today's market. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But then we have to remind people. We have to, you know, look at how much advertising goes for simple things like chocolates you know simple toffee which is one rupee toffee and all that and, and we need to remind people we need to educate people unfortunately there's been a lot of misconceptions about eggs but they are you know right now science is proving all of them are wrong uh, just today morning i saw one post about uh, you know eggs are almost almost the best food in terms of greenhouse gases at the lowest mm. it's almost the lowest and and we have taken on a program from ic to mm you know half that in the next 20 years and you know so we will almost be better than any vegetarian product in terms of greenhouse uh, gases better than peas that is amazing to know that is really amazing to know talking about science and i think you are uh, the right person to ask uh, this question because you are the chairperson of the international egg commission uh, is there a scope to uh, extend the shelf life of an egg beyond what it is now with the help of modern technology and science. Uh, what are the other countries doing with respect to it? You know, are they into heavy R&D, genetic engineering? And how can India benefit from uh, so I think uh, I think, you know, our product is something that is like, uh, you know, fortunately, we don't, uh, we don't have to do too much on this, as I said. You know, you maintain the quality. We have to move it as fast as possible to the consumer, and it's a daily consumption item, right? I don't think we need to worry too much about it. Uh, I mean, at one end, of course, there are ways and means you can do that. And uh, typically, uh, like in Europe, you are not allowed to clean the eggs. Uh, you are not allowed to wash the eggs, uh, and they don't allow refrigeration. They don't allow them to be refrigerated because Europe is very clear that. Okay. The egg has to come out right from the chicken. They will not mm -hmm. allow uh, any any manipulation, uh, which which is what is allowed in U.S. and in Japan, where the mm -hmm. eggs are washed and you know and and uh, and then then once you co take them into cold storage, then you can probably have shelf life up to six months. But I don't okay. see why you would want to do that. You know, I don't know why you huh. would want to. You want people to eat eggs every day, right? I mean, why would why do you why would you want to? Because uh, it's a perfect package. It's a fantastic package. You don't have to. Um, and I I kind of like agree with you. Uh, there are many things I don't agree with you, but this is one of them because I think the reason they put that is you know because they they do not allow lazy management. Uh, hmm. uh, because that's what uh, you know when you're washing eggs and all that, then that allows a lot of lazy management. And that lazy mm. management can be very costly at some point. Mm. Uh, and I think, uh, as I said, our, our business is very boring and simple. You have to do the same things. You know, it's not complicated at all. It is not at all complicated. It is we who make it complicated, and then we want to pump in medicines, antibiotics, and all that, mm. which is mm. completely counter logical and stupid, if you ask me. But uh, so that's one thing. Now, in boiled eggs, uh, there is something that uh, IEC, through its International Egg Foundation, we are doing in uh, in places like Africa and all that, where you know uh, it's 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 not easy. So so we have uh, developed some technology where you can extend shelf life of a boiled egg. Otherwise, the boiled egg doesn't have. And this oh. is all we are talking about without cold storage, right? If you put in cold oh. storage, of course it has. But in Africa, in small places, where do we have cold storage? So we. We developed a certain process through which you know 
uh, shelf life of boiled egg is, goes up to uh, one month, right? Very mm -hmm. cheap, very easy. Mm -hmm. There's no cost. Uh, of course, there are processed products, uh, egg powder, liquid egg, and all that. But uh, these are more convenience products, Ruby, and uh, and and you know, uh, egg powder again is typically used uh, when this market is down in you and uh, and and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think there are some, uh, we ourselves are working on some very interesting products through eggs, you know, uh, like like we're trying to, we are, we are made, we are going to launch them, uh, chips uh, with eggs, uh, you know, like wafers, uh, egg chips and uh, like, like, like kurkure or Cheetos, uh, like that, uh, where we are upping the protein to almost 10 times to, to what a normal package has. Brilliant. Uh, and you know reducing carbs by one four uh, two one fourth what it has so the whole idea is you know how do we make uh, healthy so we are also mm -hmm. going to make pasta with it so that you know pasta now suddenly becomes very healthy now because completely it changes uh, you know Keto you can not... yeah and, uh, and you will not even know that there is egg in it egg. you will okay. not know that there is egg in it but suddenly now you're getting 40 percent protein so your, mm -hmm. your, doc, your child is eating these chips now. Today you're not worried about hey, you know, with every packet they're getting like an air. Uh, they actually want to get two or three. Eggs. Not... Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what. Uh, and I think there are a lot of ideas like this coming up around the world now. So I see huge, huge options, especially for eggs as we go forward. And and you know, and uh, but then as I said, nature itself has created a fantastic package. Mm -hmm. If you handle it right. And it's not costly at all. You're getting two week shelf life. What else do you need? Really? You have to do that in milk. You have to do UHT and do and, and you know which destroys the the value of the egg uh, of milk actually. Milk, yeah. You know, uh, uh, you go for UHT and all that. It's pretty close to water. Mm -hmm. Brilliantly yeah. put, sir. I, it, it was really uh, nice to know about the new developments because I myself was not aware of a lot of things happening uh, in the egg industry. Uh, well, I think questions from my end, uh, we uh, end it here. And thank you very much once again for answering my questions. I'll be handing over the presentation to Hemant. And Hemant, I think if we have questions from our audience, uh, we should start taking them right now. Don't see any questions, yes. but okay. Either I've done a yes, very there good are no job. Questions. What there I are no questions. I think there are <laughs> no. We'll uh, wait for a couple of seconds and see if they are still willing to type in something. Yeah, we have 53 attendees, not bad. I think we had about 130 registrations, but this is, is a good okay. one. Yeah. Yeah. Are you yes. Uh, yeah. You have a question there? Yes, we have three questions. Yes, uh, by Mr. Jeevan Sonavne. Hmm. Uh, how IEC is planning to tackle AMR issue? So we, we are working very actively with the OIE, FAO, and WHO on, on uh, AI, AMR. Uh, we are participating with them. We are uh, and and you know and uh, so and then of course we are uh, uh, going to spread that information to all the egg farmers around the world. So one of the things is we do have a, a handbook. We are one of the first ones to only industry actually to do this. Uh, in all animal agriculture on uh, biosecurity biosecurity handbook uh, which is freely available to download or uh, you can get in touch with any of the Srinivasa guys uh, they can probably pass it on to you or, um, or or surabhi if you guys want we can send it to you and you can uh, transmit so sure. on uh, yeah it's a basic handbook and i think dsm also distributes it around to some of the customers around the world um so with that you know we're working at, actively with them we have a, a task force too uh, which is doing that so i think on amr we need to understand you know and this is what oie and who or fao have clearly told us is that you know uh, there are three levels of using antibiotics one is for growth promotion which is banned and should should be banned uh, and and second is prophylactic 
which is a word I only learned uh, two years back in, in this process, uh, which means, uh, you know, you are uh, doing it more for, like preventive uh and which is also should be discouraged uh and and and, and i think we should not do that uh therapeutic uh, uh, use of antibiotics is uh, is is actually a good practice and should and is allowed and that's what both fao rwho and uh, oie say that we that should be open of course uh i think there are some antibiotics which are which they have uh, which they are saying should not be used in animals and i think that's fair enough and that's what the scientists uh, decide that but i think we should be careful that you know that uh, that you know a veterinarian actually recommends and i think that's where i think sometimes we have to be a little careful because sometimes in india there is no checks and balances on that uh, hmm. i think government that's what we are saying is that uh, there has to be an effective checks and balances you know not just passing stuff uh, and, and all that they they also have to get serious about uh, checks and balances uh, you know where everything the veterinarian recommends is should be tracked and and you know so that uh, uh, and that's what happens in in Europe and UK uh, especially and that's why they have reduced the antibiotic usage big time you know, almost 90 percent it's gone down uh, and and their birds are performing amazingly well you know but sometimes my issue with this is you know antibiotics have become uh, ultimate lazy management uh, and 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 i see that you know they are not getting the productions because they think they can use antibiotics yeah okay yes uh, hope uh, that answers your question, Mr. Uh, Jeevan. Uh, one more question coming in from Mr. Aman. Does environmental heat affect boiled eggs in Africa? It does, right? It environmental does because, Yeah, it does. It does affect, of yes. course, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, because I think uh, situation is no better than it, it has and maybe uh, as bad as some of our rural areas in Africa. So it does affect, and that's why we have developed this uh, technology. You know, as I said, it's it's a, it's a very simple technology, uh, and uh, I mean I don't know the science of it, but I, I know it. As I said, it's pretty simple. Uh, but uh, where uh, we have extended the shelf life now, so without, uh, of course, it's not it is not ideal if you keep it open, leave it open in the sun, and and then you expect it to have good shelf life. No, I think it needs a little bit of shade protection. And you know, transported uh, within within some, with some shade and all that. So as I said, we have been able to easily extend shelf life up to a month. Uh, it has to be in a shelf. The shell has to be maintained. You can't remove the shell. Keep it in the shell, and and you know, uh, and it's 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 pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yes. Hope that answers your question, uh, Aman. Uh, what do you think uh, about marketing of eggs, especially in uh, modern trade and in packaged eggs pair? How do you think companies can improve here? Question from Mr. Imtiaz. Oh, that, there's a lot to be done and we have just started. We, we are doing that now for last six months and it's amazing. And, and you know, and, and now we've, we've come, we have designed a whole new packaging now and all that. And, and I'm, we are very excited about that. We are very, very excited about that. Uh, uh, you know, a year back, Srinivasa didn't have uh, any egg production. I mean, we have for breeders and all that, but today we are close to 8 lakhs uh, in this one year. Uh, yeah, I think close to 7 lakh eggs daily production. And and, uh, and we are targeting, uh, and, and almost all of it we want to sell through our own brand. Uh, and and you know so our ambition is to get to one crore eggs uh, in the next five six years a day. Uh, I think there's tremendous opportunity uh, for all of us, uh, and um, and of course uh, uh, it does mean that uh, what is special about you, right? You have to do that, and 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 that's where I think you have to be serious. Uh, most of the brands now, mostly what we're doing is I think what is is uh, there's nothing really different about those eggs, right? Just because you put it in a different packaging and now you're suddenly selling at a higher premium, 
uh, I think uh, you're damaging your brand. Of course, you might get away with it for a certain time, but you will never build a, you know, a big brand. So in fact, we are working on not, we do not want to sell at a premium price. Uh, you know, we want to sell it at market price pretty much. I mean, but, but yeah, we will have a fixed price for the whole year. Uh, more or less like that right and uh, but so we don't want to go for premium and uh, we still think it's phenomenally profitable and i think customers are waiting for good brands um, so i think it's 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 time for people to especially big producers and and and, and maybe cooperatives to start launching their own brands uh, uh, i think time has come okay so one more question from Mr. Bimal, which chemical should be used for washing of dirty eggs? I think Ms. Survi can also uh, yeah, yeah, enlighten. Probably, I'm, I'm, probably I'm not the right guy to answer that. Uh, so my first thing is, uh, and before I let Surubi answer that is, uh, is you should not be in a situation that you need to wash eggs. Uh, first point, uh, because once you wash eggs, then you have to now, you cannot handle them as normal eggs because the cuticle is gone. And uh, and that means uh, the protection that the natural egg has is gone. Uh, so now either you have to refrigerate it. Most of the solution is refrigerating it after that. Uh, so, but still, uh, if you have a few percentage of uh, eggs, which you can definitely clean, but then you have to handle them differently. You can't pass them off as regular eggs and you can't send them, you know, 2000 kilometers away and all that you, it, it should be sold very fast uh, once you wash them. At least, I mean, that's that's all I would address, but I think I'll leave it to Surabhi to answer the best way to wash. Uh, in case, and as uh, Mr. Chituri mentioned, uh, if absolutely required, uh, there are a few specialized products available in the market. One of them we also manufacture under the name of Eclean that can be used for both manual washing as well as uh, used for machine uh, washing of eggs if and only if required. Certain times the organic uh, load on the eggs might be too much, but it may be easily even you know, washed by water if required. So definitely products are available and we can send you information about our product as well. Uh, we have taken down your information. Uh, Himan, do note his uh, details yes. so we can yes. get in touch with him later. Yes. So Mr. Bimal, we will get in touch with you uh, on a personal level, level after the webinar ends. Uh, we have one more question coming in from Mr. Ashok Raju. As a new entrant to this layer business, what basic things to work on before starting the business if uh, Suresh can answer although it is not relevant to the topic so I think uh, uh, again uh, uh, I can you know please uh, connect with your local veterinarian uh, could be from our company or any company and you know please understand the basics as I said it is not a very complicated business uh, yeah, the local agent should be able to help you with almost everything. Uh, the critical thing again, uh, as I said, is, you know, uh, uh, our business is not uh, a very complicated business, but it, it does need attention, uh, which is, frankly, you ask me is the cheapest thing you can give. Uh, so, and, you know, and, and, and yeah, get to know how, what are the right practices, the right site selection. Um, that's it. I don't think it's really much uh, complicated beyond that. Um, and and uh, yeah, I mean, if you can spend a little, uh, as I said, focus on biosecurity, productivity, and then can you do your own marketing? And, you know, I think that's a huge uh, phenomenal opportunity. Uh, can you create something in your own local area and all that? And I think that will be uh, a smarter thing, uh, especially for people coming in now. Uh, yeah, and, and 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 for educated people, that should not be too complicated. And whatever support you need, we are here to help you. Great, great. Uh, time, a question from Mr. Jeevan again. 
time and again associations like PETA are giving misleading advertisements and news media also provides wrong information about our industry products. How industry can tackle these things which really affects consumption? So yeah, I mean, see, we, we are going to have that accept the reality that there, there will be some people who don't want, uh, you know, and, uh, but our only, this thing is truth, right? I mean, uh, as uh, uh, people need better health, uh, we are one of the best products for that. Uh, we are, uh, uh, again, from the sustainability angle, uh, there are few foods that compare to eggs. In fact, uh, egg uh, uh, is the closest match to mother's milk uh, in terms of human uh, pro need, uh, pro profile need. Except vitamin C, I think uh, we can take care of everything. Although I wouldn't recommend you only eat eggs uh, because too much of anything is too bad. Uh, so, but so I think, uh, I think, yeah, truth will always come out. So let's not be too worried about the negative guys. They will do the game and there will be some, this thing. And, and I think we need to learn from that, uh, where we are wrong. Uh, we need to make sure we get better and improve, uh, like antibiotics, uh, you know, I think, uh, is one of those areas. I think we should be very careful. I think that's one place. Uh, space we give birds I think that's the other area where uh, you know uh, some of us are guilty that we don't give enough space uh, per bird and I think these are two areas uh, and, and and cleanliness in the farm you know how you manage your farms and all that I think uh, those are we have to accept some of them are fair, crit fair criticisms and we have to be honest about them and address them but luckily none of our problem none of our what we have to the corrections we have to make are big deep they're not they're not at all very big they're very very simple things most of the problems are here in the head uh, in our case you know like as i said you know we think biosecurity is very complicated it is not believe me it's not just with you in my own with my own uh, executives i struggle with this in my own farms i struggle with that you know uh, you know, uh, and, and I get that, you know, my own managers, they think, sir, ye kya hai, Roj, you know, you were worker walking in and out, you know, and then, uh, so we realized, you know, after 45 years, you know, we suddenly realized that having toilets near the sheds is actually one of the biosecurity measures we needed to put, right? I mean, believe me, I mean, this 50 years, I would say, not even 45 years, right? Because my father started this business in 1965. So only five years back, some youngster came and said, sir, there are no toilets near the shed for staff, so they have to go home. So they're going home and coming back is, is one of the worst biosecurity things that we can do. Right? They're not going to take bath every time they're going in and out. Right? They're not going to do that. And so it was okay. The guy that are he can answer yeah. And that's how the issue starts. And every time an issue starts, the 10% fall in production is a few, a few lakhs loss for us. So now we put, you know, toilets in front of, you know, and it was not, what was the big deal? It was not even too much cost. And, and then you see our productions are going through the roof now. Uh, we are seeing results like, as I said, in 55 years, we have never seen results like this. Simple measures, nothing complicated, simple things like that, you know. And now the uniform, instead of them washing, we are washing it now. We're making sure that, you know, you know we have put a washing machine in the, in the unit, it's not, what is it? One lakh rupees? Not not much, right? So these are simple things, as I said, you know. <laughs> I think Emil will take one last question before we. Yes, yes. Uh, so question from uh, Mr. Bhupendra. Please suggest time of egg storage on cold storage and normal storage. Sorry, I didn't get the question. Time. Uh, Please suggest time of egg storage on cold storage as well as normal storage. See, normal uh, uh, shelf life, as I said, up to depending on the season, uh, summer maybe, uh, summer definitely it reduces because of the heat load and all that. And if it's going very long and, and all that, but still, I think sometimes up to uh, uh, Although I don't recommend you keep it that long in your farm, I think you should move it away to consumer as soon as possible. But 
yeah up, up to two weeks of transport and 10 days of transport they seem to be okay they're doing well uh, winters you probably get uh, more time maybe a week or uh, maybe sometimes if it's even lower temperatures maybe slightly longer uh, cold storage again you have to be very careful uh, because uh, you know if you do not have i mean you get good shelf life that's not a problem but then when you move them out of that you have to you know uh, uh, water you know when a cold egg comes out and and, and this especially if there's too much humidity then water builds up humidity builds up on the egg and that destroys the you know shelf life very rapidly so you have to be very careful that uh, you know that uh, is eliminated uh, or uh, or you have to sell very fast after that so for most part i'm not a big fan of uh, putting eggs in cold storage uh, i i can understand from time to time there needs to be maybe but i think uh, if we if we get our act right you know do a little bit of promotional activity education and all that i think uh, you know because uh, how come milk is consumed every day and not eggs you know i think uh, i think that's what we need it's it's i think a failure on our part on industry's part to you know do education himant any more or shall we uh... uh one more question i think that is uh, very much relevant we can quickly finish that what is the shelf life of eggs in summer and winter then what is the right temperature to store the eggs when demand is less question from mr rajesh so i'm not the technical guy but i think uh, i think in cold storage i think it's it's i think around uh, uh, if i'm not wrong i think 5 or 6 or maybe i think 10 degrees but the closer you get to zero the better naturally for shelf longer shelf life uh and uh, yeah i think as long as you you don't let it get beyond 20 22 i think on most days uh, you know keep it protected no direct sunlight and and i think well ventilated uh, you know this good air movement and all that i think you you should easily get uh, 10 10 day shelf life or more uh, you know but uh, but i say you know it that should be mostly on transporting and and all that you i wouldn't recommend you should keep them in the farm i mean 2 3 days shouldn't be a big deal that that also shouldn't be too much of an issue uh, but uh, but you know our product is something that people need every day so really don't see why you should keep it too long and yeah okay uh so i believe uh, i'll be stop taking uh, more, more questions because of the time constraint i think so even what we can do is uh, we can give them yeah. a place where they can send in more questions we can write to mr chitturi sure. and yes. uh, he can revert back you know um we will conclude the session yes now. yes so uh, thank you uh, mr suresh for uh, humbly accepting our request for the webinar and enlightening the audience and helping us gain knowledge about the industry uh, i hope audience has been enlightened with some knowledge and they will take some things uh, from this session uh, so they can uh, obviously write to us about their uh, biosecurity related problems or any farm related pro problems they might face uh visit our website www.nasipur.in and write us on email info@nasipur.in so yes thank you any concluding statement from your end you can do or else i'll end the session Chitturi, here would you like to say something from your end no once again thank you very much for the opportunity uh surabhi and hemant and uh, yes and uh, i think yeah and as i said uh, our uh, business is very simple i hope uh, everybody um, manages the farms well uh, it's it's a mostly most of them are management issues nobody can help you with them rest all you know we are here to support you uh, but uh, you know i think uh, uh, hopefully use the right uh, biosecurity product from nasipur and make sure you uh, you know maintain uh, good biosecurity at your farms uh, and uh, that's it
thank you oh yes thank you thank you thank, thank you, you all the attendees for attending yes thank you, thank you. Right. okay bye. take care sir bye bye